This is how you can make a pagination system for your discord.js version 14 bot, so let's go and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you're interested in getting the source code from this video or any other video on my channel, you can go ahead and join a super god tier subscription on YouTube, or you can get a god tier subscription on Discord. You can also get any of these three bot packages. They are fully coded Discord bots based on a specific topic. All of this will be in the description below if you're interested, and with that, let's go ahead and get into the code. So to start, we're actually going to go over two functions, and we're going to go ahead and create a pagination. And we can do .js. So this is going to be our function. So we're going to get our action row builder. We can get our button builder. We can get our button style and we can go ahead and get our component type. Then we can do equals require and we're going to go ahead and get our discord.js package. Then we're going to do module.exports. We can open this up. We're going to do async and we can get interaction. We can get pages and we can get time equals 30 times. And we can do 1000. We're going to go ahead and open this up with an arrow function. So within this, we're going to go ahead and open up a try statement. We're going to say if no interaction and we can do or no pages we can do or no pages greater than zero then we can go ahead and throw new error and we can go ahead and say pagination and we can go ahead and do invalid args or something like that this is just a quick little throw error then we're going to go ahead and do await interaction that defer reply and we can go ahead and start off by saying if pages.length is equal to one we can open this up we're going to go ahead and return await interaction at edit reply we can go ahead and get our embeds which is going to be our pages we can get our components components which is going to be our empty components we can go ahead and do fetch reply and we're going to set that to true and then we can do var index equals zero we can do const first equals new button builder so we're going to go ahead and create these buttons this is going to be the page first button so it's going to look like this with the custom id of page first we're going to have a double back arrow just like that it can be an emoji we're going to have our button style that primary and we're going to set disabled to true we're going to go ahead and get a couple more buttons and i'll walk them all through so now Next, we're going to get our previous button, so it's going to look like that. We can do page previous just like that with a back arrow. We're going to get our button style that primary, and I just went ahead and fixed that arrow as well. And we're going to go ahead and set disabled to true. We're going to get our page count, which is going to be index plus one divided by pages dot length. We're going to get button style that secondary disabled to true. We're going to get next, and I'm going to go ahead and replace that arrow again, so we can go ahead and make that right. We're going to get page next here. We can get button style that primary. We're going to do last page last a double forward arrow, and we're going to do button style that primary as well. So now that we have all of our buttons for the pages that that we will be needing here we can actually go ahead and handle these so we can come down here and we're going to go ahead and do const buttons equals new action row builder and we're going to go ahead and add our components we can go ahead and get an array with first previous we can get our page count we can get our next and our last those are all of our button variables then we're going to do const msg equals await interaction to edit reply and we can go ahead and get our embeds which is going to be our pages and we can do index and then we're going to go ahead and add a comma we can get components which is is going to be our button components and then we're going to go ahead and fetch reply and we're going to set that equal to true just like that so after we do that we're going to come down here and we can do const collector equals await msg to create message component collector and we can go ahead and open this up we're going to go ahead and get our component type and then we can do component type dot button then we can get our time as well so now that we have that collector we're going to go ahead and do collector dot on and we're going to go ahead and do collect so we're going to enable that collector we can do async i and we're going to open this up so we we have our collector we have our buttons and we have our page and our message as well then we're going to go ahead and run a quick little check statement to make sure that the i.user.id is not equal to the interaction.user.id and if that's true we're going to go ahead and return a reply saying that only the interaction.user.id or username can use these buttons and we're also going to set informal to true so that's just to make sure that the user of the buttons is the user that sent the actual interaction then we can go ahead and do await i.defer updates and we're going to go ahead and do if and we can do i.custom id is equal to our page first then we're going to go ahead and open this up we can do index equals zero and we can go ahead and do page count dot set label and this is going to be pretty much what we had above so we're going to get our index plus one divided by our pages dot length and then we're going to come down here and we're going to say if and we can do i dot custom id is equal to our page previous just like that we can open that up we're going to get if and we can do index is greater than zero and then we can go ahead and set our index to minus minus we're going to do page counts and we can do dot set label and this is going to be similar to what we did above as well so we can go ahead and get a string and we're going to go ahead and open this up within this we're going to get index plus one divided by page dot length as well so after we do that we can come outside of that 
And now we're going to be making our else if statements. So right under the page previous, we're going to do else if, and we're going to do this twice. The first is going to be if i.customID equals page next. We can open that up, and then we're going to say if index is less than pages.length minus one, then we're going to do index plus plus here. And then we can do page count, that set label. Again, we're going to do index plus one, and then we can do divided by pages.length. So we're going to do our next else if outside of the first else if. And we're going to do if i.customID equals page last, we're going to set our index to our pages.length minus one. We're going to do page count dot set label, and then that is going to be index plus one divided by pages.length, just like we've been doing so far. So now we're going to go ahead and make a couple more if statements. So we're going to come right under this. We're going to go ahead and say if index is equal to zero, then we're going to do first dot set disabled to true, and we're going to do previous right here dot set disabled to true as well. And then we're going to do else, and we can do first dot set disabled to false and we're going to do previous dot set disabled to false as well so that's going to be that logical statement so now we're going to do if and we can do index equals 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 our pages dot length and we can go ahead and do minus one we're going to open this up and we're going to do next dot set disabled we're going to make that true and we're going to do last dot set disabled and that's going to be true as well then we're going to go ahead and say else just like we did above we can do next dot set disabled to false and we're also going to do last dot set disabled and we're going to go ahead and make that false as well so just like we did above we're doing the same thing for the other buttons with a slightly different logical statement now we're going to go ahead and edit the message. So we can go ahead and do a wait msg.edit and we can go ahead and get our embeds, which is going to be our pages and we can go ahead and get our index. And then we're going to go ahead and add a comma we can get components, which is going to be our buttons components, just like above. And that's actually all we're going to have to do. But we're also going to go ahead and catch an error in here in case the message fails. When I was testing it, it did fail a couple of times. So we're going to go ahead and catch that error. Then we can go ahead and do collector .reset timer just like that. So after that, we're actually going to come outside of this collector right here. And we're going to come down here and we're going to go ahead and end the collection. So we can do collector on, and we're going to go ahead and do end. And then we can do async. We're going to get an empty function. We can open this up. And then this, all we have to do is await msg.edit and we can get our embeds, which is going to be our pages. And we can go ahead and get our index. And then we're going to do components, which is going to be our empty array. We're also going to go ahead and catch our error just in case this fails like it did in my testing of this. All right, so after we're done with this collector, I want you to keep in mind that this entire thing that we're creating right now is one big function that we're actually going to go ahead and call within our command. So because of that property, all we have to do is return our MSG so that the function returns the message. Then we're going to come down here to our catch and we're going to go ahead and catch our error and we can open this up. And we can just console.error and we can go ahead and get our error. And we're also going to go ahead and do plus and we can get our error. Or if you don't want to do the plus, you can actually just go ahead and, and append it right in here. So we can go ahead and get our error just like that. So with that, we're actually done with the function property and the function part of this video. So what we've done here is we've made this function that can be called anywhere within our bot. So anywhere right now within an interaction, we can actually go ahead and call this function and we'll be able to use our pagination. So let's go ahead and create a test command to actually test all of this out. To do that, I'm gonna go over to other, I'm gonna go ahead and do test pagination and .js. Then this, we're just gonna go ahead and create our slash command builder. We can get our embed builder as well. Then we can do equals require, and we're gonna go ahead and get our discord.js package. This is just creating a basic command. So we can do module.exports, we can open this up. We're gonna go ahead and do our data, which is going to be our new slash command builder. Then we're gonna go ahead and set a name, which is going to be maybe test, and we can do pagination, and then we can set a description and we can say testing pagination system just like that and we're going to go ahead and add a comma and we can do async executes we're going to get our interaction and we can open this up the first thing we actually have to do is we're going to need to call our function so to do that we're going to do const pagination and we can do equals require and we're going to go ahead and call our function just like we were to call a schema so we're going to get functions and then we can do our pagination right here so we're going to go ahead and call that function up above. This is defining it so that we can use it down here. Then we're going to do const embeds equals an array. And we're going to go ahead and make a for loop. So we're going to do for and we can do var i equals zero. We can do a semicolon. We're going to do i is less than four. And then we can do i plus plus. Essentially what this is doing is this is creating a for loop to actually handle the embed. 
So four is the number of pages it's gonna make, just for reference. So if you wanted to make more pages, I believe you can just set this number bigger. But we're gonna go ahead and do four for the reference. We're gonna do embeds.push, and we can go ahead and get our new, and we can do embed builder, and we can go ahead and do dot set description. And I'm just going to go ahead and set a description for this embed. So this is what you would essentially do. You would push a whole embed builder to an array. And then down below, we're going to go ahead and pass in the interaction and the embed array into our function. But within this, you can go ahead and create the embed just as you usually would. So let's just go ahead and do page. And we can go ahead and do i plus 1. And we can do, I guess that's all we have to do really. So we've created our embed builder and we've created our index and all of that. So now let's come down here and we can call our functions. So we can do await pagination and we're gonna go ahead and get our interaction and we can get our embeds, which is actually gonna be our array of our embed builders, which is going to have four embed builders. So really what this embed array has is four complete embed builders with the pages one through four. Then we're gonna go ahead and input into our pagination function that we created before. And then that's gonna apply all of the buttons and the logic behind clicking the buttons to get to each page. So with that, we're actually done with this entire system. So let's go ahead and restart the bot, test this out, and then we'll come back into the code and test a few more things out as well. All right, so over in the Discord server, we can actually go ahead and test this out let's get our test pagination command so as you can see here it's going to give us page one we have one two three four five buttons the one in the middle just shows how many pages you have and how many pages you're actually on so for example we're on page one and we're on one out of four so because we're on the start these buttons are grayed out but we can use these two so let's go ahead and click on it and as you can see now we're on page two out of four we could go to three out of four we could go to four out of four and now these buttons are grayed out so we have to go all the way back so that's how these buttons work and it works pretty well. It changes the pages just how it should. All right, so back in the code, I'm gonna show you how to do a couple of things. The first is if you want to change how many pages you have, just go ahead and change this right here. So for example, if we wanted five pages, we change it to five. If you wanted three, you would change it to three. Let's just go ahead and do three. So now I wanna show you how you can actually customize the description of this further. So to do that, we're gonna use variables. So let's say we can do var and then we can do page one equals and we can do this is page one and we could do any string of text you want we could do the same thing for two and three so of our page two equals and then this is page two and then whatever you want to do uh, and then we'll do one more so of our page three equals and then this is page three and then we can just do that so as you can see the strings are completely random, completely random set of strings here. It's not based off of this, like pages constant. This is all dependent on what the content of the variables is. So then what we would go ahead and do is we'd actually remove this line. Then we would say if i plus one is equal to two, or actually it would be one if i plus one is equal to one, then we would go ahead and do embeds.push. And then we would go ahead and do new embed builder, just like we did before. So we do new embed builder. Then we would go ahead and set a color. We could do blurple. And we could go ahead and say a description. And within this, we could just go ahead and say our variables, so page one. So we would do the exact same thing using the logical statements. So we could say else, and then we could do if. Um, and then i plus one is equal to two. And then this time we would do page two. And then we would go ahead and do this again. So i plus one is equal to three. And then we would probably just do else here. I guess you could do else, but we can still do else if. Uh, so we'll do else if equals three, and then we'll push our page three. So that is essentially what you would do to customize this even further with unique strings for each embed page. Now this works just like a regular embed. So you could change the color, you could change the description, you could set a title, you could do whatever you want to do. That's not really the point. The point is you can customize each page without using a constant by creating variables and then using logic, using the i variable to assign uh, each page their variable. So now let's go in and save the file, restart the bot, and test these changes out. All right, so over in the Discord, let's go ahead and run the command again. Um, and as you can see here, it's gonna go ahead and think. And as you can see here, we're gonna get our pagination. So before we do so, I wanna show that if I actually go ahead and click on this up here, it's not gonna do anything. That's because we turned the bot off, we're using collectors, and we actually have a handle for that, so I'll show you that in a minute. But as you can see, this is page one, and we have one out of three. So if we were to go over, now we have this is page two, and we could go over again, and this is page three. So each page has their own unique string that is not constant to any of the embeds. So that's how you could customize your page string. I thought I'd include that. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and stop clicking this. We can save maybe page two. We'll actually, yeah, we'll keep it on page two. I'm not gonna click this for 30 seconds, and then after that 30 seconds is up, all of these buttons are actually gonna disappear.
And as you can see here, after 30 seconds, all of the buttons disappeared and we're still left on the page that we left off on. So we're left on page two, all the buttons went away. The reason we're doing this is because after 30 seconds, that means the command is probably AFK. So we just wanna go ahead and remove the buttons so that if for some reason the bot turned off, we didn't have all of these buttons that don't actually work. So that's our handle to prevent the interaction from failing just like it did above. So that's how you can make an advanced pagination system for your discord.js version 14 bot. If you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here and we happy to help you out and you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community and with that i will see you guys in the next video